Blake Clark and Lanessa is curriculum specialist. Is that the right title? And it, I carry that instructional coach. Instructional coach. Okay. They are from GWA. Um, they're here to tell you a little bit about what you can expect next week. They run one of the top charter schools in Utah. It's a fabulous school. You're going to really love what you see, and you're going to say to me, "Wow, all these kids behave." <laughs> they are still kids, but it, it really is this nice feeling of, whoa, they listen, they're respectful. So they're going to tell you kind of what you can expect. Perfect. Is that good? Yeah, good. What time do you want in there on the Oh, I, yeah, I will go to that. Oh, okay. So like Peggy said, my name is Blake Clark, and I'm the executive director at George Washington Academy, which is a K-7 public charter school. And Peggy needed to give us a little bit more credit because she said we're the one of the top performing charter schools. We're the top performing school. Okay, they are the very best in the world. No, <laughs> don't put that on us. But in the same. I don't know why I missed that. <laughs> so we do have um, elementary grades of K five and intermediate grades of six seven, which some of you are a part Let of. Let me as zoom well. in on you. Okay, I, good. You're I, right there. You oh, okay. oh, oh, just a minute. Who's watching this? Oh, it's on YouTube, it's on the internet, it's you are right. <laughs> So, um, what Lanessa and I are going to speak about is dress code, curriculum, expectations, like Peggy alluded to, of what time we need you there next week, what the schedule is going to be like next week. It's going to be a very interesting week, because we've never had the block the same week we also have Valentine's parties. <laughs> So that's going to be quite I told interesting. told them there would be love in the air. Yeah, so that'll Blake, be... Blake loves the Bachelorette, so just know. My favorite show. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we're not kidding. I'm Taylor Swift. Uh, yeah, I'm Taylor Swift. Okay, Vanessa, why don't you start, and then we'll kind of go through. Do you guys want to open and follow along in the folder? So we really uh, try to be as clear as we can. Uh, about what your experience will be like and I almost feel like I need to tell you something about myself because I've like learned all about you guys with these things and I feel like I know you now and, but um, I've been in education for about oh, 20 years and um, uh, like I said I always feel like I can be some of your guys' moms not all of them but you know some of you it's okay I'm their grandma yeah that, I mean that's like a step new new level for me because that's like oh my gosh I'm that person now so here we are when you we would like you to be at GWA by about 730 or maybe a little bit earlier School starts at 7.45 and it goes to, our contract hours are 7.45 to 3.15. But school begins at 8.15 and kids are allowed to come into the building at 7.50. And we have carpool that runs really smoothly in the morning and I'd say it runs pretty smooth in the afternoon as well. So it's not as nightmarish as it used to be. But we do have lots of um, parents who come and drop off their students. And you may or may not witness carpool, depending on the, your teacher's duties. So it begins at 8.15 and it ends at 2.50. And then on Friday, we do have half days with it ends at 1. But for our dismissal this year, and we may continue this throughout the year, because you know, where we've learned a lot, put in a lot of new practice in place with the COVID situation, there's a lot of things that we're probably going to just keep as well, but one thing that we did have to adjust was dismissal time because we had to stagger the dismissal time so not a whole bunch of kids were coming out at the same time. So kindergarten, second, fourth, and sixth, they dismiss at 245. So if you're in those grades, make sure that they're out the door at 245 because then that bell does not ring at 245. You just let them out. The bell rings at 250. And so you'll need to, so then the rest of the other grade levels obviously will let, let them out at the bell. And then on Friday, it's a 1255 situation and a one o'clock situation. So at the very beginning, you know, you'll see that the teachers are greeting the students at their doors. And um, we want you to shadow the teacher, do exactly what they're doing. They monitor the hall in the afternoon. You wear a mask all day. 
um, or your SUU identification, and when you check in at the front office, then you'll have your phone ready to go because you're gonna you're gonna take your camera scans a QR code, and that will um, have you sign in so that we know that who's in our building. And, and I'll be there on. I'll be there every morning to help you guys sign in and take your temperatures as well, so that will make more right. sense when you see it. How do you take your temperature? Beep. Oh, okay. I, I just wondered, because you're so reading. high tech. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes, uh, so, and then, yeah, it'll be that front foyer area, and then as you walk in, there will be like doors that are locked anyway, so you can come in, check in, see Mr. Clark. They may be open, because then the teachers will come. And, and get you. Um, and just smile and be excited because we can tell you're smiling under your mask, you know. Um, and then we'll go into the dress code for, for teachers. So, if you guys want to pull out uh, this paper, and this is our faculty and staff dress code for any employee, or as you guys will be semi employees, you'll be part of our school next week. So I'm not going to focus on every single one of these. And the last one is Spirit Days, and we usually have Spirit Days on Fridays. We don't have a Friday next week when you guys are there because it's a teacher work day. So they'll be working on getting stuff ready for online, because many of you are paired with a teacher that's balancing in-class instruction and online instruction. So when you're teaching their class, they'll be in the back working with their online students, filming videos of instruction for them. So it's a little bit different. So what I think that you guys need to know is don't go buy any new wardrobe. Just use what you have and do your best to meet this criteria. Is all clothing should be business professional and appropriate for a school setting. Especially if you're with the younger kids, just know you could be on your hands and knees on the ground, kind of meeting their needs. So just be, just be wearing things that are appropriate to possibly do that. Employees should wear appropriate shirts that cover shoulders, stomach, back, lower back, and chest. Um, no visible body piercings with the exception of pierced ears. And tattoos can't be visible. So if you have a tattoo that's usually visible, we just ask you to either put long sleeves over or cover it with makeup. And I think the last thing that is kind of a popular one that we have to address is leggings or exercise clothing isn't permitted as well. Any other questions about dress code that you guys have? Please don't go and buy a new wardrobe or anything. Just make what you have fit for these guidelines. Yeah, thank you. And um, just real quick, the curriculum is listed there. We do teach Saxon math. And there's more in depth with the, the curriculum summary in your folder. And the core knowledge language arts. Um, we do core knowledge science and social studies, which is uh, interconnected with CKLA. Um, but there may be an additional lesson uh, that supports the history of the science lesson that's going on. That's the core knowledge piece that some of the uh, grade levels have incorporated. We do follow the seed standards for science. And then um, you'll also be witness to Leader in Me. We have, we have been working diligently on becoming a Leader in Me school. And so you'll see some Leader in Me boards that were just barely, uh, they're brand new for us. And um, we have a Leader in Me teacher. And so if you are familiar with any of the Leader in Me um, habits, the seven habits or anything, utilize that, incorporate that language into your lesson. Um, that's something that our teachers are, are working on. They are by far not experts at it. They are just learning it. But um, if you know it, use it and you know, start thinking of beginning with the end in mind and being proactive and seeking first to understand and then to be understood and, and, and so forth. That is not a requirement, but it's a suggestion because that is something that we're working towards. Of course, you want to become the expert in the classroom, um, having your lesson plans ready and on the desk in a situation where most of the teachers now are using a chalk program and it's a digital uh, lesson planning format so it may be on their desktop and um, one of the things is that they'll want to know oh should we give them our password and um, I don't think that we they, 
that just say no, I don't need that, but if you could give me access to your lesson plans, and what they can do is they can share those with you through a substitute, substitute folder. It's a just sub substitute. And they will give you their key to get into the classroom. And then, and you guys will make arrangements for that. Please do not go home with that key. Please give it back to the teacher at the end of the day. You'll be arrested. Yeah. Way home. And if you forget you're walking out the door, just give it to the office. Ladies, as you're walking out the door, that's fine. Um, and you know, just be prepared. Like you know that we sh you should be because if you're te teaching on the fly, it's not the best situation for you, and it's definitely not the best learning situation for the students. So take things home to prepare. Make sure you are clear about your objectives and getting your materials ready before you go home. So when you are the one taking over the classroom, get everything ready. Like get, get your wall ready, your objectives written before you leave. That way, if there is something that happens on your way to school or the night before or whatever, at least your class is ready to start. And then if there needs to be a sub or whatever, they, it, it, the classroom is ready to go and start no matter what. So that is just good practice. Um, professional dress, of course, professional talk professional presence. Um, there is a difference between walking through the classroom door like this. I'm so nervous. I don't think I'm going to do. I'm so excited. I'm so nervous compared to, you know, oh my gosh, I'm so nervous. I thought that, you know, I don't know what I'm going to do, but I'm so nervous. Okay, there's a difference between that and how you carry yourself. Carry yourself high. Carry yourself well. You're at a stage right now where be confident in your skill set. Yes, you are still learning, but this is a career of everlasting learning. So um, just go with what you have and be confident with what you have. Because when you're in front of the students, they're not dumb. They can tell when they can walk all over a teacher. They know, and they're only five. They can, they will. And so when you command the classroom, it's all a presence. You know, it's your body language, it's your eyes, it's your excitement, it's your come with me on this journey that we're going to go on for learning. You want to be with me right now. Lean into me right now. Do you hear what that? Oh, that's learning right there. Okay? So give them the chills because that's what you want to bring to the classroom. Always um, consider privacy. Anything that you encounter in a classroom is private between you and the teacher. Please do not discuss um, student names um, or grades or even home situations to each other. That is something that it, it, is, it is tempting to do. You can share experiences like a, a conversation that you had with the kiddo because it's fun or maybe um, it was, it was uh, really an insightful conversation, but most of those other private conversations, please share with the teacher. Have that, or you can share with me, or Mr. Clark, whatever. Um, we keep that, um, we, we really are entrusting you to keep that privacy. For lunch, eat in the classroom with the kids and the teacher. And you find a place to distance yourself. We'll encourage the teachers to have a place for you. Most of them are really good about providing a spot for you to put your stuff or um, by their desk or wherever. Um, but you can bring your own lunch. Um, we have a microwave, you can heat it up. Or you can get a school lunch, which is $4. That's pricey, I think, for the kid's size version of everything. So. Uh, so like like do, Vanessa said, we usually eat in the lunchroom, of course, yeah. but with COVID, everything had to change. So the kids eat in their classroom for about 20, 25 minutes, and they get to go outside for 20 minutes. So you will have a break with the teacher away from them for a little while. Yeah, a little downtime. Um, begin your files for teaching. I think you've already started, but you know, collect as much as you can. Get ideas. Glean, glean, glean all the good stuff that you want. Oh, I love that. I love that. I love that. I love that. You don't have to take everything. There may be something the teacher does that you don't love. Don't take it. You know, you know what I'm saying? Just don't do it. It's do, do what works with you, for you. 
And then the classroom management piece. Um, I can't emphasize enough that positive reinforcement goes the longest way. That is the most researched intervention in all of classroom management. When you put in place even a positive comment, a positive gesture, uh, a smile, a wink, a proximity of, oh my gosh, good job, you know. Any of that, boy, that's gonna, that child is now yours. And when you come across as you're observing and you're seeing, we forget as teachers, we're busy, 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 busy. Delivering, 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 instruction, 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 sit down, sit down, sit down, stop talking, stop talking, you know, instruction, 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 instruction. That we tend to forget. Oh, I see that Johnny is sitting with his arm, his hands locked on his desk. Well done. Who else is sitting with their hands locked on their desk? <gasps> Whoa, oh, good job. Wow, we are ready to learn. Here we go. And just filling them with your expectation and really reinforcing what you want to see. So if your kid class is crazy, take a minute deep breath. Mm -hmm. And out. Take a deep breath. And out. Tell them what to do with their hands. Lock your hands on the desk. Sit tall, eyes on me. Oh my gosh, well, I see your eyes. They look so good. Oh, I can tell you're ready to learn. You look great. You're amazing. All those things that you may start feeling like, oh my gosh, I feel so good now. Well, they do too. And that's what you need to start developing with them and, and make sure that if it's not something that you're used to, have a little card to help remind you that these are the positive reinforcement words that I want to say and this is what I expect. Lastly are the teacher duties. Um, most grade levels will have recess duty in the afternoon. Most of them have afternoon recess. Only kindergarten has morning recess. Lunch recess, you do not have to do, but afternoon recess, you will. And so they'll go out with the teacher. Um, carpool possibly, but I highly doubt it. And then if you are going to be sick, will you please let Anne Marie Pearson know that there's a phone number right there. She is our go-to person of substitutes, like she and Mr. Manzanares work closely together to make sure the classroom is taken care of and covered. And as, of course you can text your, your teacher, you know, to let her know, or him know. So, and then let her know those specific things that, hi, this is Vanessa Stevens, I've been in Heather Erickson's second grade classroom, I'm not going to be able to be there today. So okay, thank you. And then lastly, communicate and ask questions. Don't be afraid to ask, 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 ask. How did you incorporate that? How did you even start that? What made you decide to sit the child there? How about, you know, just really absorb as much as you can. We have phenomenal teachers at our school. And we have your regular old average kids. And you'll see that they do amazing things with those kids. If you want to get kind of a glimpse of our school, you can go to the website um, and um, get more information about our school and what it looks like and, and all the things that we do there. So. Yeah. So just like Vanessa said, Vanessa, just, she's working on her administrative degree. And for a project I had her do, she just did a virtual tour that's on our website. Yeah. So if you want to see like what this actual building looks like before you walk in, you can just go to our website under about, and then there's a virtual tour that you can watch and see what your teacher looks like if you haven't already been on the website as well. So let's go to that little tiny brochure with those students on it. You might have these students in your classroom that are featured in this thing, but it's kind of funny. The first thing I want to point out, Vanessa covered the majority of it, but I want you to open it and then look at this red side of free public charter schools. When I was sitting where Bailey was sitting, I graduated in 2013 with my bachelor's. And then I taught fourth grade for three years at Three Peaks Elementary, if you know where that is, out in Enoch. And then I became an instructional coach like Vanessa for Iron County School District before I moved to St. George with this position. But I always had this inclination in my head when I sat in your guys' seat of, 
I don't even know what an online school is. I definitely don't know what a charter school is, and I don't know what a private school is. I'm just going to apply for district schools. That's what I was comfortable with. I went to North Elementary and Cedar myself, went to Cedar Middle School, went to Cedar High School. It's like, this is education to me, is just the district part of education. Raise your hand if you went to a private or a charter school. Okay. With this, with this number in here, it's not uncommon. Usually when the block has its normal 35, 40, there's about one or two students that have been. And I think we're going to start seeing that number increase as well. But one of my preconceived notions was a charter school costs money. Only certain kids can go to a charter school. Um, their funding's a little bit differently. Then when I worked in the district for years, the district kind of saw charter school was stealing the kids, although they're stealing all of the money that should be going to us and doing kind of their own thing as a school. So I want you to think about, and I'll answer maybe some of them before you even ask, but I want you to think about questions that you have, not just coming to art school, but as you're about to apply for jobs in the next year and in your first classroom that's yours, what is it that you want? And then try your best not to pigeonhole yourself in a box of, I'm only going to work in Iron County School District because that's comfortable to me. Even though you're going to see next week, our school is just like any other school, except we do things differently. We have uniforms. I think that's the first thing you're going to notice is the students have uniforms. But what a charter school is, how every charter school is founded, is it's a group of community members that see a need for their students that they don't feel like is being addressed in the community. So, parents got together, this is our 15th year at George Washington Academy. 15 years ago they got together and said, we want an academically rigorous school that is a K-8 school. Right now we're K-7. We used to be K-8. A K-8 school that prepares them to leave our campus and go to honors classes, to take AP classes, and then be extremely successful. So are you guys familiar with the term Sterling Scholars? Maybe some of you were. So in Washington County School District, the students leave us, and then they go to district middle schools and high schools. And you'll see about 40% of Sterling scholars came from our elementary school. So we're a very academically focused institution. And every charter, which a charter is just a written agreement that you have between all stakeholders, is our focus is academics. If you've heard of Tuacon High School, which I work closely with in the charter world, their charter is performing arts and visual arts. There's other charter schools here in Cedar City, as well as in St. George, that have technology and art, Montessori, whatever their focus is. A charter school also doesn't limit where you live. So in the sense of, I lived, my mom still lives like two blocks from here, but because we lived there, I had to go to North Elementary. I want you to think about that, and maybe some of you are parents, or want to be a parent, and you're thinking, if I was in a neighborhood, and we just moved into this neighborhood, and I researched a school for my kids, and you found out maybe it was doing things that you disagreed with, or maybe when you look at the school report card, it's a failing school. As a parent, I'm like, oh, I'm not really confident that I'm going to send my kid to a failing school, right? But you're locked in because that's how districts work. You go to the school that because you chose to buy that house, it told you what your future 12 years is going to be in education. Charter schools are like, no, we're going to let anybody come here um, as long as our school, as long as they provide transportation. Other charter schools have busing systems, but we don't. So we have students that come all the way from Zion National Park that live in Springdale. That is an hour and a half commute to our school. We have kids that live um, in Dameron Valley, if you know where that is, if you're going to Snow Canyon, you just keep on going. There's neighborhoods up there. Santa Clara, we've had Mesquite before that drive in. So we take the whole entire Washington County region and they can come to our school. I think that's it. Charter schools are free and they're public. A lot of people think like, oh, charter and public schools, they're one and the same. It's open to anybody. Whether your ability or disability, we have SPED programs, anything like that. So do you guys have any questions specific to GWA or specific to charter schools in general that you've always wanted to ask? Maybe you've been watching the news and it's like, oh, those charter schools. <laughs> any questions? <laughs> Brittany, are you going to raise your hand? No. Nope. Okay. <laughs> you 
always have to ask a question, even if it's like off the wall question. Okay, I'll ask questions that we hear every time, but you have to ask at least three before we leave. This is a question I get all the time is, well, I kind of feel more comfortable going to a district because I heard that charter schools can fire you on the spot anytime. Have you guys heard this before? So why didn't you ask? <laughs> so that, that's not necessarily true. In the district, you hear about this thing that some people love called tenure and some people hate. I hate it. <laughs> Sam, I did my administrative endorsement four years ago, and Sam was at Cedar Middle School when I was shadowing the principal for months. And at any school, whether it's Three Peaks where I taught or at Cedar Middle School, tenure brings this culture that's really interesting that you guys will see in education. In the sense of, I've been teaching first grade for 30 years, and I'm terrible, but no one can be better than me. <laughs> I don't want my kid to have that teacher, and neither do you guys, right? But what districts do is they say, you know what? But some of us that have taught for 30 years love what we do. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyway, so <laughs> you, have the, you have this teacher, and maybe their heart isn't into it. They're just really tired. Well, they can't really do anything, so it's very common for districts to say, okay, you're going to move from North Elementary, and we're going to move you to Three Peaks, and they're going to have to deal with you for five years, and they're going to move you. And you have to work with those people. At a charter school, we don't have tenure, and we don't have contracts, which is kind of where that rumor comes into place. We have what's called letters of employment. So every spring, we give out letters of employment to every employee we have. We have 107 employees, 55 teachers. And it's not like a surprise party where they're like, ooh, I hope I get one. They know they're going to get one. And if there's any question of if they're going to get one, they're on a teacher improvement plan. They have been on multiple years on that plan. They work with Vanessa and I. Vanessa goes in and coaches them. They film themselves. We film them. We give them feedback. We give them goals. So at the end of the day, they tell us, like, I didn't meet my goals. I don't know if I'm the right fit. And then they usually just say, I don't feel comfortable coming back. So that's how it really works. It's not like we just go in and say, like, Sarah, I think today this just isn't going to work out. Mad's going to replace you. See you later. You can't, we still can't do that. We, we abide by the laws that everyone abides by the laws of, of ethical standards. So that's not true, but there are, there are no 10 years and there are no contracts. So it's just always going to be. Does that clarify your question you didn't ask? <laughs> Matt, go ahead. Well, I've heard from some teachers who had worked at charter schools that they didn't get benefits. Is that? Oh my gosh, that was my next question. <laughs> yeah, good job. Um, it always comes back to like benefits, insurance, retirement, right? Um, every charter school is different. I do not know of a charter school that doesn't offer benefits. We, of course, offer insurance and retirement. It's a little bit different, and some charter schools are part of what's called the Utah Retirement System, and every school district is part of the Utah Retirement System. Do you want to dive deep into this for a minute? Because you're about to go into math, right, Peggy? You bet. Okay, here we go. <laughs> I'm very afraid. So, like I said, there's a few charter schools that are part of URS. There's a massive fee to be a part of URS, so most charter schools can't afford to do it. But what URS is, is it's a, I just forgot the word, Penny. What do you get when you retire from URS? Pension. Pension, that's where I was going. Yeah, Penny, I read my mind. Um, you've heard of this word before? This is like the benefit of education when Peggy started, it was this golden pension, right? <laughs> it's not my great anymore. Anyway. So what a pension did... Mine's great. Yeah, Peggy's is great. What a pension did years ago was it saying, hey, for every year you work, we're going to give 2% of your highest three-year average. So let's say you've been working for 30 years. 31. And let's say you've been work I've worked with Peggy for years. This is just how life is. Um, let's say you've been working for 30 years, and your, your average of the highest three years is $50,000. <laughs> so what this means is you're going to get 60% of $50,000 for 
forever, and then of course you'll get Social Security and anything you put into retirement. Well, they did this beautiful thing in 2012, I think it was 2011, where they changed this and said, you know what, we can't actually afford that, so we're going to go down. So we're going to do it at 1.5%. Now I'm thinking, oh my gosh, that's 0.5%, that's still great. Now remember, these people got 60% of their highest three years. These people now get 45% and they're thinking about changing it to one. So now the draw to be in this retirement system, it, it's tough. It's tough to sell people on, and, and they'll tell you that too. So what charter schools do that aren't part of the URS like we do, is we do a 401k match, which is greater because it, go, it ebbs and flows with the market, right? Because pension doesn't account for inflation. So your 60 grand that could have, you could have lived on years ago, when you're actually in the retirement stage and you hit maybe 80, that's not going as far. When if you're in the stocks, it goes a little bit further. So our school offers insurance. It kind of mirrors Iron County. We have an HSA. We put $2,000 on every employee's HSA every year. And then of course, it's, it's a high deductible health insurance plan like most education entities are right now. And then we do, um, Oh, I'm trying to remember what the percentage is. Vanessa, can you not read his mind? Yeah, come on, Vanessa. No, when it comes to this, I'm like, <laughs> that's <one. laughs> We do a percentage match every single year that you work for us. Oh, yeah. Like we add a 1%, 2%, 3%, depending on how many years. So, and then of course you can put in any percentage of retirement that you want. So we do have insurance, we do have 401k, we have retirement, everything like that. But if you're thinking about going to a charter, I would ask every specific one because it's different because we're our own district. Good question, though. Any other? Go ahead. What's your turnover rate? Ooh, great question, Judith. We actually scored the highest in retention of teachers last year in the audit that we did. We usually lose one to two teachers a year. We had 55 full-time teachers and 107 employees, which is really good for our number. And 80% of the time we lose them to retirement. And then some of the time their family's moving. We had a family last year that moved to Oregon to be closer to their family, just random things. But not to lie, there is probably, I don't know, 2% of the people that leave that just don't think that they're fit, right? They try it out for two years, they're like, this isn't, this isn't the environment I want. And I think that's what I wish someone would have told me when I was interviewing for jobs, is you're not only trying to impress the person that's interviewing you, you should have them trying to impress you because you should want them as much as they want you. Because ultimately, if that's not going to be a good fit, it's just not gonna work out, you're gonna be miserable or they're gonna be miserable that you're there. Go ahead. So do you get lots of applications to where, I mean, there's only 15 of us right now, but if you only hire two a year, uh -huh. we're not gonna have much luck getting hired by UWA and we should at least start in the nasty public school system. <laughs> <laughs> um, now I would, I would. Served me well. Yeah, and I, I think, and I, I love districts. There, there's benefits to both, mm -hmm. and I'll talk about that in just a minute. Um, I, I don't know if you should look at it like that. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking of there's someone in here that's with Ren Jeffries in fourth grade. Yes. Oh, bless your heart, Brittany. <laughs> oh no. Ren was, exactly. Ren was sitting in this chair exactly a year She's ago. Fabulous. And if there's a good block student, we hired two of you guys last year, and we only had two openings. Oh, wow. Yeah, if there's a good block student, and they came after the week, spoke to me and Lanessa, and said, oh my gosh, we love your school, we love the culture here, we love the PLC, we love the team dynamics, we love the kids, we want to work here. They applied a few weeks later, and I offered them a job instantly. Like, how many SU, I know you've got probably five or six SUU? Yeah, so we have Chance, Brandon, we had Danny, Brindley, Ren. Uh, Mr. Hatch, is it Hatch in fourth grade? Yeah, yeah. In the yeah. He's an SU. Chris. And yeah. Mm -hmm. This honestly, I would, I would say that the block is the best experience for you, but let us know if on Thursday, 
And, and we're not offended if you say, you know what, I loved it here, I learned a lot, I just don't see this as a match. Perfect, yeah. that's great. But if you say like, oh my gosh, this was the best experience I've ever had, it's so much better than I thought, let us know and we'd love to see your application when you get to that point as well. There's always a risk that happens in an interview because I've never seen the person teach before. Vanessa and I will be walking around all next week seeing you guys teach. And it's pretty easy from our perspective, being in education, we can tell in seven minutes. So if it's like, oh my gosh. Would you is, like them to perfect. come student teach at their kind university? Yes, okay. we'd love you to student teach. If you ever want your foot in the door to get a job anywhere, student teach at the school that you think is going to be a good Because fit. GW is an accredited mm -hmm. charter school, you can student teach there if you want. Yep. We'd love so to have how you. How we put in uh, an application to, I mean, we already turned in our student teaching. You just now, would go to, what's her name? Lorraine. 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 Just ask her if GWA uh -huh. has any. Well, you mean to student teach? Yeah. I would just go say, I would like to go to GWA to student teach. Okay. Yeah. And then she'll contact us. You have to fill out another form. Another separate form. For St. Yeah. George in general. Oh. Yeah. No, we don't, Washington just because County. that's Washington County School District. This would not be their, their own district. Mm -hmm. So you wouldn't have to fill out yeah. that form mm -hmm. unless you want to be in Washington County School District. Does that make sense? Yep. Yeah, because it's a charter school versus right. public. Okay. Sarah, was your hand up? Yeah, um, I have heard, I don't know if it's true, that Teachers at charter schools don't have to have a teaching one. No, man, that's <laughs> terrible. Yeah. Well, is that true? So let, well, in some, let's let's talk about licensing for just a minute, because that applies to all schools. Oh. So um, Vanessa is going to be able to answer because they just changed it this year with licensing. I'm going to go back to Cedar Middle School because it's a public school. It's a district school we're all familiar with. They posted a special education teacher position, and I don't know if it's still the case, Peggy, but special teachers are really hard to find. Mm -hmm. So they got all these applicants that didn't have a SPED degree but had other degrees, let's say, in like a bachelor's of biology or business or whatever. They can take the best one, then they can put them on a route to take specific classes and take an assessment to get that license. Alternative that route to licensure, ARL. Yeah, so that is true, but it's not for charters, it's for everybody in the state of Utah. Oh, okay. So if there's no one that applies that's actually qualified for it, there are certain things that the state but allows like, to I do. think what they're asking is, we know some charter schools that not all the teachers have a license or are in route for a license. Yeah. They have a degree. I'm just saying. I've had experience in not in Utah, but in Arizona. Um, when I taught in Arizona at the charter schools there, there were teachers there that did not have licenses, they just had a degree. So for example, it was a science teacher who had his master's, but did not have a teaching license. So they just allowed for that to, to be okay. And I think it just depends on the charter board of the state and the charter and the, the administration within the charter school as well as the parent board and what they require as far as that's concerned. In Utah, I would say right now if we're licensing, that would be really, I know it exists, <laughs> that would be really hard to come by, honestly. Okay. Because you have to, every teacher has to be on some sort of route to eventually get there and there's a timeline. Yes. So if there is a teacher right now that's saying, I don't have a license and I'm never going to get one, well in three years they can't teach anymore. Yeah. They had their time slot to get it. Yeah, yeah the state is really um, buckling down on that and making sure everyone is licensed, but still acknowledging the fact that um, applicants may have a degree. Right. And if they have a degree, then they can go, they can get their associate license, which is at about, which is a three year license, meaning I'm on my way to becoming a teacher. That's kind of what you get. That's what you guys are basically. Is Until you teach for three years, you're a level one, or that's an associate. Was I teacher? Once you teach three years, then you're vetted, you're tenured, you're, you're in. I don't know Sarah, if that's really important to you, and Lanessa knows that is my bias of like, uh uh, we are not yeah. doing this. Yeah. 
I, I would ask the school and say, does everyone that teach here, do they have a teaching license? Like have an education? Because the <laughs> charter school by my school growing up, I knew like my friend's parents that just got jobs there and they didn't go to school to be teachers. <laughs> yeah. 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 Charters are changing and we're so glad they are. And you're, yeah, GWA's never been that way. They're going to be held to a higher standard. Yeah. yeah. Any other questions? Go ahead, Amanda. Well, I'm curious as to what your charter looks like. Your charter agreement. What yeah. are the key points on there? Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah good thing. So our charter has goals. academic goals. Our academic goals are that in math, science, and reading that we're going to perform three to five percent higher than surrounding neighborhood schools in the district. So we're guaranteeing we're going to be academically higher. It has social and emotional goals. It has student growth goals. Um, saying that every student, no matter how they come to our school and their abilities, that they will grow within the year as well. That, that's pretty much the framework. There's a few leadership things, a few communication pieces. And you're going to see at GWA, now we're like entrenched in it. Vanessa's been entrenched in it longer than I have. This is my third year. But now I'm entrenched in it, but I remember the first time going to GWA and talking to the students. They talk differently than even the school I was at. And we're a Title I school, just like they were. We have 24% of our students that qualify for free and reduced lunch. We have homeless students. We have, it's just a normal school, but you're going to see the standard and the expectation that we have. These students you talk to as adults, and they, they can handle that. Does that answer your question? Okay, perfect. Sam, did you have one? Yeah, um, so, um, but I may have forgotten to know about it. It's Again. <laughs> so Peggy and Jamie have been um, telling us to get like a toolbox ready to come to your school in case like bag a lesson. Yeah, bag tricks, stay a lesson, go short. Yeah. Oh yeah. And then we've also, I think we've all communicated with our teachers that we're going to do it uh -huh. and ask them like, is there something you need us to bring, or is there anything that you think we should bring or no showing up on day one? No, I think I think what Peggy said is always good. You never know when the activity that you have planned or the lesson that you have planned, the kids just understand it quickly or they don't understand it at all. So you're thinking, I'm gonna to have to communicate to the teacher that they probably need to reteach this tomorrow or whatever it is. I think it's always good to be over prepared. Whether that's a bag of tricks or, or whatever. Not a movie. That should not be your nice word. Toolbox. Okay, anything else, guys? <laughs> yeah, go ahead, Amanda. What does your online portion look like? Do you use the same programs or do you have different Yeah, programs? great. We use the same curriculum and we use Canvas, just like you guys mm -hmm. use. So our teachers record videos of the key content areas. They're usually like five to ten minute videos. And every Monday, I stand outside with the two assistant directors and all of the online parents have to drive through and pick up the materials. So when we went into closure last year, we couldn't reference anything because the kids couldn't come back to bring to get anything out of their lockers or their backpacks. I mean, around the desks. So this year, the teacher will refer to, okay, I want you guys to turn to page 63 in your CKLA workbook and let's go over this together. And then every day, the student can then sign up for a one-on-one -on -one tutoring session over Zoom with a teacher's assistant. So that's what it looks like right now. We have about 85 kids online. We started with 120 online. And now as, I don't know if it's like case counts of COVID or they just feel more comfortable now, they're coming back. Now you're thinking, for some schools here, that's like half their population. We have 1,020 kids. We're a massive school. We're bigger than most high schools. So that's only, that's less than 10% of our population online. Go ahead. So with that many kids, how's, like, how's the teacher ratio student? Good, it caps at 28. Okay. students. In our charter, that's a charter agreement, you can't have more than 28. Okay. My first year of teaching third grade at Three Peaks, I had 34. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Okay. Yeah. So 28, honestly, is a lot to our, to our teachers. In, a, in the charter world, half of my job is making sure that our students, or our students are getting the best education possible, which is why I have two assistants and a coach. The other half is the business side of how many students is it going to take to fund the programs that we want, to hire another teacher, to hire a counselor. So that's hard because our teachers, which from the outside perspective, 28 is like a perfect class size in a district, but to them it's a lot 
of students because sometimes they've been at 24. But 28 is the number that funds everything we want. And they know that. Go ahead, Sean. Do you have a parent involvement requirement? Uh, requirement, more like a recommendation. recommendation. So we usually say um, every year besides COVID year, 30 hours per family of service towards the school. That can be helping the teacher from decorating their door to grading to helping do progress monitoring in their class. We do community-wide service projects in the city of St. George. They can come and attend those. They volunteer on the PTO for like the Halloween carnival or the talent show, any things like that. Yeah, go ahead. What does your SPED program look like because you're so academically focused? Yeah, great question. That's actually another charter myth. It's like you don't have to have a SPED program, but that would be illegal, as you know. <laughs> yeah. um, so our SPED program, I think right now we have about 45 IEP students. 12 of those are severe, so we have a severe unit. So that's not very many. For not a, kids. No, it's not very many for the population of a thousand. Yeah, you're correct. And then we have three mild moderate teachers, one severe teacher. So their caseloads are pretty manageable. But fabulously yeah. manageable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Most fed teachers have 45. Yeah, no, my yeah. mom for sure has that many kids. Yeah. So it's very manageable. And you see our severe when I when I worked the severe unit at Three Peaks, my classroom was right across from them, and they were pretty self-contained. We're, we're not like that. They push in the majority of the day. Do you find that your spec kids are a lot of times like younger siblings? Uh -uh. Does that make sense? Some people come to our school specifically for our SPED program. Mm -hmm. Does that answer your question? Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, so I would say our SPED ratio is small for 1,000. Our ESL, when I first started here three years ago, we had eight. Now we have almost 50. It's ramping up. Anything else? I just want you to know you guys are the best block we've had so far. Good questions. <laughs> but I've also asked half of them. Just kidding. <laughs> um, One. Yeah, Mike, right. I thought your block was the best block we've ever had. No, ours is <laughs> um, let's talk about social and emotional for like three minutes and then we're going to leave. Um, I'm sure they'll probably talk more about now than it was when I was going through the education program. So what you're going to see, and I think this might answer Sam's question in a roundabout way with, with SPED. You know, sometimes in, in a school setting, depending on how many pieces of support staff, the number of support staff or support personnel, it's really easy for a teacher to say, oh my gosh, my student is becoming academically deficient in these areas, I'm worried about them. They take data for 12 weeks and refer them to SPED, right? We have so many supports in place at our school, I actually think that's why our SPED number is lower. The students that need special education are definitely qualifying for SPED and they're getting those supports. The students that would have normally been tested, we have so many supports. You guys are going to experience what we call tier two, which is a 40 minute section every day, where every teacher takes a specific skills group. So I'm a reading person. So if we talk about reading for just a second, let's say I'm teaching fourth grade and I'm balancing the 28 kids in my class. Well. I have kids that are on a pre-primer, beginning of kindergarten reading level, all the way to an eighth grade level, and I'm one human trying to balance how do I give these kids what they need. This kid needs massive comprehension and writing support to excel, and this kid needs like vowel patterns to coding to even be able to read a word. So we do in our school for 40 minutes a day as the whole grade works together, and one of the teacher takes all the students that need like the coding fluency help, all of the students take, or another teacher takes comprehension, fluency, writing, and it splits. So we're able to really hone down on the skill set of those students and concentrate on that. We have a reading center for kids that just need more of like a small group environment. But you're going to see when you talk about like interventions and what those are, I always thought interventions always had to be in a small group. You can offer a kid or a group of students intervention as long as they're all in the same skill set at a much larger scale. Because if everyone's in the same reading level, if everyone's working on the same goal, why can't you just teach them as a whole class? 
So you'll see that at our, at our school. You'll also see back to the social and emotional thing, we have a full-time counselor, we have a full-time social worker. So they help with a lot of behavior things. Um, when you guys get into deeper into the trench of your career, you're going to see it's really hard to balance the academic needs and behavioral needs. And sometimes you're going to want to refer a person to special education for behavioral needs. When if behavioral needs aren't addressed, of course, you're going to start seeing academic deficiencies as well. That's like the big rock of everything. So our social worker helps with that. Our counselor helps with that. We have a wellness center that helps with that and a wellness center aid. So yeah, it might make a little bit more sense then. I think that's why. We have so many preventative supports in place that the people that are qualifying for SPED need those supports. But the people that are on the fence that maybe at other places don't have those supports, they're not, they're not qualifying. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Does that make sense for a SPED teacher? You bet. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I've got Go one ahead, John. More. Just because at North, um, when there's like an emotional breakdown yeah. in your classroom, their procedure is to leave the kid there and take everyone else out. Yeah. What is your procedure? And that's only, I mean, the state trains all of us in that, and that's only when the kid is in the possibility of harming someone else or themselves. But if they're having an emotional breakdown because something happened at home with like an animal or a parent, we see that a lot. Usually what happens is every teacher has a radio or a phone in their room, and they call student support, and there's five of us that have radios on us, and we'll come down and help that student. We'll call a social worker, take them to the wellness center if they want the to walk with us. The only time you take the whole class out if there's a danger. That's yeah. the only time, not if somebody's having a crying meltdown. Right. That way, you will get support for that student. Yeah. You wouldn't take the whole class out. If they're, if they're like ready to throw a chair, probably remove the whole room, but yeah, if they're, yeah. That's what Blake did when he was in the wall. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. Okay, we good? Sam, you got more questions? No. Just playing with your button. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, I want to make sure it still looks good. Guys, <laughs> thank you. She's trying to impress you. Give her a hand. Yeah. She's back. Um, let's talk for a few minutes. Blake's always going to spin his school as the best. I hope you will spin your school as the best. Whatever school you're at, very best. I taught at South Elementary for a long time. Taught at Fiddler's. South Elementary was the best school. It put the best students and the best teachers, always. Okay? Because that was the school I was at. I wanted to, I want you to be proud of your school. Um, Blake paints a really pretty picture. Know that when you compare the two, it's not as pretty as, as he makes it think. So really do your research on the charter school. Not all charter schools have certified teachers. If they're not accredited, they're probably working towards that. But not all of them have. DWA Blake is a stickler for that. All of his teachers are accredited. All of his teachers have a license. All of his teachers have an education. So know that. What's your questions now? Not charter. It was just Valley is not charter. Valley is a charter. I mean accredited, sorry. They're not accredited because they don't have a high enough percentage. They're working towards it. So that means Student teaching would not be an option there because no. it doesn't give us any credit. Or, right. Unquote. Okay. So I will tell you that Valley's Charter, okay, when you do a charter school, you have to have a theme. GWA's theme is academics. They tell you they're, what do they say, 30% above? 3% three, three above? Anyway. Three. The district or whatever. Mm -hmm. Their focus is academics. That's their charter. Um, Valley's focus is public school, kids that don't fit. So it's a different structure. There's one out by Tuacon High School, which is an art school, which is an art charter school. There's an elementary out there. Their focus is the arts. Um, Crimson, whatever it is out there by GWA, their focus is STEM. What's the one here on CBA? Um, Montessori. Montessori. Okay, so when you do write a charter, you have to have a focus. What is your focus? Um, GWA's focus is academics. They will tell you that their kids are higher. Here's my question to you. Are their kids higher because they're higher socioeconomics? They had more advantage? He will tell you that they have this other, but it's a small percentage. And they're SPED kids. You would not recognize them as SPED kids. 
at all. Except for my knees look really guys. Well, <laughs> there's some I know. <laughs> they, they probably do, but can you imagine only 40? Yeah. Out of 1,225 or more? That's my, so my mom works at Cedar Middle School with this bed, and that's her caseload, but there's five of them. Mm -hmm. And the, the, that's the same amount of kids. Yeah, five, five yeah. teachers. Yeah, that's crazy. And you're going, oh, so you have two kids? No wonder they're doing better. Yeah, they're going to do better when you have one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, that's fine. So know that there's some things that way. Now let's talk insurance. Um, public schools pay most of your insurance. You pay some, they pay. At the chart, you pay for your insurance through a charter school. He didn't tell you that, right? You pay for it. It comes out of your paycheck. So know that. Okay? Um, what about retirement? Am I, at this point in my life, so, 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 so grateful that I did that because I can retire and make the same amount of money I'm making right now with my Social Security and my... Is that not a comfort? Yeah, and I know you're all thinking, no, I just want money right now. But when you hit 50 and you're going, I'm so sick of working, how can you quit? Right? Um, so he said that his charter school was free, but I thought it was where you told us that it costs money. Oh, it doesn't cost money, but, but the parents, they either donate this time or they pay. Oh, okay. And they do fundraisers up the wazoo, <laughs> okay, that public schools cannot do. Public schools cannot be fundraisers? Uh, it has to be very specific and for one thing, you know, it, oh, okay. sometimes, but most, most public schools don't do fundraisers. Unless it's a PTA fundraiser, like in the class, you're not going to yeah. send candy bars out with just third graders to go sell. They'll eat them all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I was also told with the URS, I think it is, um, that it's now 35 years that you have to teach. Mm -hmm and not the 30 or something like that? The economy goes up and down, up and down. When I started, it was 2%. I still have that 2% because I'm still teaching in a URS system, right? Um, Social Security is now, it used to be 60, then it went to 63, and then it went to 65, now it's 66 in six months. Depends on what year you're born, depends on what school district you're in. Most school districts have, or Pension funds have a retirement at 20, 25, 30, 35. More as you go up. Right. Does that make sense? 35 is. It's not very long. And I mean, it is when you're older, that. like me. I was older. <laughs> I didn't old. start till I was 30. So, with the pension, if you were to like switch school districts or like schools does that affect it or if you stay within the state of utah it doesn't affect it if you move to another state yes okay. but can you leave it in yes so you could leave your pension in but you would start a new pension in nebraska okay right doesn't something like that change with the district with a different separate district too in the same state or no uh the urs is the utah retirement system, policeman, um, any school employee, any city employee, county employees, they're all under the URS, it's not just teachers. So yes, that does change by state, but not by district. Number of years in, okay, there's a career ladder. If you think about how you're gonna get paid, they will put you on this scale. Here's year one, you're making 40,000. Right? Okay? Year two, year three, year four. So you're starting right here as a new teacher at 40,000. You'll come down to two and you might make $40,030. That's your rate. <laughs> right? However, if you get this is your bachelor's degree plus 30, then you go over and down and you might make. 4,530. If you get 15 hours, 30 hours, 45 hours of graduate credit. Doesn't count if you get it before you start teaching. So those of you instead that are jumping into that, be really cautious. Be really cautious about getting a master's degree. It won't count on your pay scale. 
Does that make sense? So you move over and down, or you can just move down and only get the cost of living raises for 35 years. If you move over and down, then it pays to get a master's degree and a, all those other things. Um, so I, someone told me like it's better to wait to get a master's degree until you have so many years of experience. Well, most, most master's degrees won't accept you unless you've had three years. You can start, but not real in depth. However, I wouldn't wait long because then it doesn't pay because you're paying for a master's degree. Why not get it early? Why not start year three over here making more money with a master's degree? Right? Then you're moving down and over, right? You can just move down and never get any more school, right? And you'll just get the cost of living raises all the way down. If you want to make more money, you move down and over. So bachelor's plus 15 is what Iron County does. So 15 graduate hours earns you more money. Um, bachelor's plus 30, bachelor's plus 45, or a master's degree. Because the master's degree is usually about 45 credits. Okay? Master's plus 15, master's plus 30, master's plus 45, PhD, EED, whatever. So then, right down here, that's where you would be. Does that make a little bit of sense? Yeah. Um, does, like, if you were to get like a reading endorsement or an early childhood endorsement, those don't count? Okay. They may pay for it. But they would They may get the classes money. that, you get no raise for having more, unless they are at the graduate level. Okay. Now sometimes, a reading endorsement, the class will be through continuing ed, it will be at a 5,000 level. That's definitely hours, right? So a reading endorsement might be 18 hours probably. That's usually what endorsements are, 15 to 18. Well, for sure, be getting that, and if the school is offering it and you don't have to pay for it, you'll have to pay for a recording fee, which is usually about $50 for a three credit class, then you are gonna move over. But you gotta have 15 before you move over. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so if I want to go get my master's right after I graduate, do I lose my license? Like if I don't, if so master's? No, because if, if it's in education or something associated with education, you just send those coursework and that, what's it called with your grades on it? Transcript. <laughs> <laughs> Into the cactus system to your team. And they will say, oh, you're still going, you're still going. That counts, that counts, that counts. Okay. You have to teach three years in a public school to become a level two teacher, to become a tenured teacher. You have to. At a charter school, you don't. But they want to kind of watch you. In those first three years, they can fire you without cause or let you go without cause. I don't even say that they'd fire you. They just say it's not a fit. If you do an internship, they don't have to keep you in that school if they don't have an opening. Okay, that, but that is one year towards retirement, towards teaching, towards, okay? If you're good when you do an internship, they will find you a school in their district because they want to keep you. And once they have an opening, they might come after you even if you're at another school and say, come back, come back. Okay, so that is there. Um, three years teaching to get a license, a teaching license. Does that count only for full time or does it? Full time. Um, do you, those master classes count towards your professional development? Because you have to have those professional development to keep your license, right? Yes, they do. Okay. Definitely. Anything education associated, even trainings, like if you went to Saxon Math training, that can count towards keeping your license. If you did CKLA training, if you did, I don't know, whatever, STEM classes, whatever you take that way, that counts towards keeping your, your license. Okay. Does the internship for that year count towards the three years to get your license? Yes. Or is that Okay. If it's in a public school. Yeah. I just have a question about like teaching in different states. If you teach in one state for five years and then move states, do those years then not count towards retirement? I feel like that's how it works. Yes. Yes. <laughs> that's, so that's exactly right. They will not count. Yeah. However, states do buy years. So say I, I've taught 15 years in Utah. 
my husband decides we're moving to Colorado. Yeah. I would go to the Colorado School District and I would say, I've had 15 years in a public school. They'll usually say something like, we'll buy 10. Okay. So we'll put you in here at but a level 10. Away, at least. But they don't, well, not always, especially if you're in rural somewhere that needs you. Mm -hmm. They might say, we'll give you 20 years mm -hmm. tenure. Okay. And you're going, okay. Just depends on the district. Okay. So if I wanted to sign up with the Department of Defense and teach a military basis, does that keep my pension retirement no matter where I go? If I move around? Because that's a government. Okay. Now they won't they won't pay into it as long as you're working for the Department of Defense or whatever it's called. Uh -huh. They have their own pension. It's a it's a federal pension. Uh -huh. Government post office workers. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. And so if you're working for the Department of Defense in the Department of Defense schools, you have a whole different retirement system than you do a state system, which follows you wherever you are as long as you're in that system. Oh, okay. The minute you leave that system, exactly. you can leave it in and pay into it and still keep it going, but they won't pay into it. Okay. But your, your district will. Yeah. Okay. You probably have a pension that... I, I have a Roth PSP with the military. And it probably paid for your school. Well, I get the GI Bill, so my school's fully paid for. It. Yeah, that's what I mean. So, okay, that works that way. Good questions. I was just wondering. So, does the three years for your license does that have to be like consecutive? Yes. And then for the next level, that has to be consecutive for how many? No, you just do three years. Okay. You're given a license. It will just come to you if you've done three years. Then you have to renew that license in five. So you do that three, you get your license. In five years, you have to renew it. How do you renew it? You get points in your cactus system. Points mean you do extra training. Points mean your principal assigns you a committee. You put those hours in. Anything outside the school day you do for school, you count towards points. Easy to get 300 hours in five years. I'm You're just good. wondering, like, because eventually children. Right. I was wondering how that, like, does that just undo the licensure kind of thing? Well, so you would, then you would drop, you let that lapse. You could keep that license going by taking a course, by getting those same amount of hours. If you once get to that level license, that three years, if you once get that, then you can keep it going by not teaching full time. Okay. Does that make sense? But by gaining points, substituting, taking a class, working on committees, PTA, okay. that kind of thing. Does that mm -hmm. kind of help? Three years probation, that's what it kind of is. They want to watch you, they want to know you're a good fit, they want to know you're not an axe murder. Okay, that's why they kind of get put this three years. Fire without cause, let you go without cause. After that, they have to have cause. They have to explain to you why they're letting you go. In a charter school, they can walk in tomorrow, he didn't say this, and say, Sean, you're really not a fit. And you go, but, 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 but. They've probably given you a, warning this is why you need to be working on but they could walk in tomorrow and say you're not a fit in a public school system you've got the pta the uea the nea behind you so they will fight for you unless you of course hurt a kid or run drugs on campus or you're a closet axe murder then they won't keep you. <laughs> You talk about like a union for teachers, right? They don't have a teacher's union. They do. Okay. UEA, Utah Education Association, NEA, National Education Association, ICEA, Iron County School District Association, Education Association. Every school district that is public school has a union. You don't have to join. Costs you about three hundred dollars a year, which is a lot of money. I joined the first year, felt really pressured. Oh, our whole school is part of the union. Okay, I'll join. Then I researched it. Um, the school district has to have insurance on you. They have to support you. Then I gave just to Iron County School District. I didn't join the union because I didn't like some of the things they voted for. But I gave that money instead to my local union, even though I wasn't a member then, and just said, put this towards education. Because if a union, school district reps, fight for the school district, they don't fight for just the union members, they fight for the entire school district. 
Does that make sense? And you'll learn all that later. Okay, other questions? So as a black student, let's say we're teaching on Thursday or Wednesday, and he walks in and is like, you're not a good fit. Like that'll happen? <laughs> no, absolutely not. First of all, Blake's what do you like, do? You Blake's, like a, Blake's like a ping pong game. His mind goes. <laughs> I'll say, who's room are you in? I don't know, one of those. Mm -hmm. Who was in there? Oh, one of your blocks, dude. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Lanessa is more, but they will never come in and tell you you're not a fit, ever, ever. Now they may come to Jamie and I and say, wow, we are so impressed with this one. What's the chance of getting him or her to come? And I'll say, I don't know, ask them. And they, they might send you out an email, they might not. I will tell you usually not, just because they only see you two days in a strange situation. Yeah. It, it's a weird situation, you're trying to be that teacher. But if you are really interested, give me, come tell me, I am really interested. I want you to try it first. I don't want you to just say, I want to go. This is it. I want you to try it first. I will be really honest with you and not say anything bad about Blake or this. It would not be for me. I'm too much of an orange. Okay. No, <laughs> I'm very much a free spirit. And, oh, let's talk about this and let's move to this. That's my style. That might not be your style. You will love, love, love the consistency of this school. All the kids walk in the line, they're very polite, they're, you know, they really focus on that because the parents demand that. Then we will go to Kenyans, the kids don't have parents. So who demands? They've never had to sit in a chair. They don't even know what a chair is they do. But think about the difference. It's all about experience. Are they smarter at GWA? No, they're not. They've just had more experience and more consistency. They've had books to read. They've had people read to them. They've had clean sheets on their bed. They've had food. When you don't have food, do you think you're worried about learning? No. I'm thinking that right now. Why are we here? Oh. <laughs> We're good. Okay, does that help? This is a trial. This is for you to see what a charter school and how it runs. I have a sign on my desk, those of you who have been in my office, my goal today is to keep the little people alive. That's your goal. That's your goal. Your goal is to also to practice some management and some strategies that you have and some ideas. Bailey's got a fun idea for sixth grade math. Okay, try that. I'm not saying it'll work. It sounds really great. I'm maybe not. I act like I know all, I don't. I don't. But I think that's a really great idea. Okay, so try some things. Be the teacher, be the teacher, be the teacher. You're not their best friend. You're not there to coddle them. You're not there to change things up. You're not there to be politically incorrect in any way. You're there to have a teaching experience in someone else's classroom. Make the best of it but be prepared. Those that get the most frustrated are those that didn't even bother to look at the lesson. Oh, I got this, I do this. And then the kids will tell you, we don't do it that way. And then that makes you mad. Well, we're doing it my way today. No, follow what's going on, be there. Be mindful, be in the now. Don't be aloof, be part of their lives. Um, be in the present, enjoy the kids and their personalities. Don't say, well, I'm just here two days, it really doesn't matter. You will only grow if you jump in and do it. Okay, any other questions, worries about GWA? We're good? Okay, 